single out salute. I'm Lord Matre, the hip hop futurist. You're now tuned into the Super Longevity Institute podcast. Today, I have a special guest. Born in the Bronx, he has been a prominent force in the hip hop industry since its inception. He started as a member of the pioneering hip hop group Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, one of VH1's 2005 hip hop honorees. In 2007, these legendary lyricists became the first hip-hop performance to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. He has collaborated with such artistic talents as Nas, Teddy Riley, Angela Winebush, and award-winning producer Dr. Dre. In 1992, he demonstrated to the world his musical strengths by transitioning from great MC into a professional vocalist for the R&B soundtrack single, Does Your Man Know About Me? from the feature film Juice. He has a passion for acting, and he has worked as an extra in a range of films. His charming personality and charismatic smile is why the public continues to love and respect him. His notoriety can best be revealed through those famous lyrics, Raheem in the Ladies Dream. An educator of hip-hop culture, this year he took home the Grammy, the Lifetime Achievement Award, along with his bandmates. Ladies and gentlemen, Hip hop futures transhumanists worldwide, Raheem. Yo, man, thank you for coming on, man, and congratulations on your lifetime achievement award. It's well deserved, man. So, how you feeling thank this you evening? So much for having me, my brother. I appreciate it. Thank you. You, you know, that, I always that was, uh, an awesome introduction. Thank you. I try my best, man, because you know you. Um, I got to give it up for the people who came before me, the great pioneers like yourself, man. If it wasn't for people like you, I wouldn't even be here. So what part of the Bronx are you from, man? Walk us uh, through a I'm journey. I'm from uh, East Tremont Avenue, 179th Street, mm. Boston Road, uh, Lambert Houses. That's mm. the uh, housing complex I grew up in. No yeah. doubt. Shout out to Lambert Houses, yo. I know exactly yep. what that's at. Yep. <laughs> um, man, yo. So um, how does it feel? To, um, What do you feel about winning the Lifetime Achievement Award? How do you feel? What's, what's your thoughts about that, man? Um. I feel like it's always, you know, a great thing to uh, receive your flowers while you can still smell them. That's right. And so um, we're, you know, I, I can speak for myself and I'm truly uh, grateful uh, that we were acknowledged um, mm. for for our cultural contribution. Okay. And, um, you know, uh, I think that that more recognition need be bestowed upon the hip hop community. There are, you know, uh, a plethora of other, you know, deserving hip hop artists that I Without feel doubt. like should get the recognition and uh, they haven't yet, but you know, mm. hopefully, you know, as time uh, moves forward, we'll, we'll acknowledge them as well. No doubt, I totally agree with you, man. Um... Do you think that the hip hop the hip hop community can have its own Hall of Fame that's just as prestigious by our own people? Sure. Um that's not to take away from the Grammys, nece- but Right, that's that's a necessity. And mm-hmm. um, you know, I'm sure at some point eventually that will be a reality. It's just a matter of, you know, uh us coming together and deciding that that's, that's right. uh a necessity, you know, and and making it happen, you know? no doubt, man. You look like you ain't aged a bit, man. What you doing, man? You uh, must, you gotta be doing something healthy, man. You look well. I, I I eat healthy, you know. Mm-hmm. I try to eat as healthy as possible. Every now and then, I slip on a banana peel and uh, ingest something that isn't as healthy. But for the most part, I I eat pretty healthy. I don't uh, I don't eat any meat, mm-hmm. and um, you know, I guess uh, fruits and vegetables you know, are, are uh, indicative of longevity, you know. No doubt. Wow. I try um, to be natural and, you know, uh, I, don't, uh, I don't ingest many things that contain sugar. Mm. And, um, and I read the ingredients on everything before yeah, I, you know, I ingest it. And that includes uh, putting it on my skin as well because, mm. you know, when anything that you put on your skin – is absorbed uh, in your bloodstream, so That's right. you know you, you have to be mindful of that as well. Do you hear that? He breaking the science down. See, I like that. See, that's what I'm saying. We, um, the uh, younger generation of hip hoppers, if you take care of yourself and you get your diet right, man, 
You know what I'm saying? You can have super longevity just like this man um, and, and, and bring something great to the game. I'm saying, what? how was a, a jam for you back in the day before y'all put out any records? What was what was that time like? Man, um, the jams back in the days were, um, I would say, monumental because um, you always knew when there were when there was uh, a jam happening because there was a, a vast migration of adolescence from <laughs> one from one uh, one geographical location in the Bronx to another. Mm. Uh, you know you. I, I've very easily walked from the South Bronx to the North Bronx uh, mm-hmm. many a day um, in the summer, you know, just to go wherever the jam was happening. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there was multiple jams and you obviously couldn't be at uh, at all of them simultaneously. So you went to the one that was the most popping. No and doubt. so, you know, that's, that's where I... Uh, Mm. That's who I would follow. I'd follow the the vast migration of adolescents, mm. and you know, join up with that crowd and rewind up walking to wherever that jam was going to be at. You know, whether it be you know, uh, eighteen Park, sixty three, sixty three Park, twenty three mm. Park. You know, uh, uh, Bronx River, uh, Rosedale. It, it didn't Damn. matter. Wow, you know, we we was there. Damn, I wish I could get in the. Uh, a time machine and just go back and see y'all perform on the street okay. before y'all put out records. If I could just get jump in a time machine and see yeah, y'all could do your thing, that right. would be, I would love that. If any of the science could make that happen, holler at me. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> right up, yo. I'm with um, you. You, um, when did you start rapping? Uh, I started rapping, uh, as far as the year, I started rapping in 1978. Wow. Um, 1978. I started rapping, and um, that was like the beginning of 78. And then by, I'd say, uh, I'd say by March of 1978, I joined uh, the Brothers Disco, DJ Breakout, DJ Baron, and the original Funky Four MCs. I was one of the original Funky Four. And we battled uh, Grandmaster Flash and the Furious for May 11th, 1979 at the Webster Avenue PAL on 183rd Street in the Bronx. Webster <laughs> Avenue, yeah. Wow. And, and Flash and them won the battle. Mm. Uh, but uh, a few days after the battle, uh, Melly Mel, and at the time his name was uh, Mr. Ness, he later mm. changed it to Scorpio. That's right. They showed up at my mom's apartment. Mm. and uh, requested that I uh, join their group. Wow. And so uh, they said, you know, you could you could take your time and think about it and let us know, you know, in about a week or so. So I was like, okay. And then uh, one of my homeboys, uh, rest in peace, the original DJ Eminem, uh, he was like the local DJ from Lambert. Him and his brother, DJ Cool Joe, uh, hired the Furious Four to perform at... Uh, Forest Houses Community Center, uh, home of uh, my legendary brother Diamond D, Fat yes. Joe, yes. Um, Showbiz and AG. Yeah. Uh, and so um, uh, we did this performance at uh, Forest Houses Community Center, but uh, we weren't working, up, or they, the Furious Four, weren't working with Flash at the time. Mm. And so... Um, Legendary DJ Charlie Chase wound up uh, yeah. being the DJ that cut for us uh, at that show. And I went on stage with the Furious Four. And then after the show was over, they called me backstage and asked me how much money I wanted. And I was like, uh, I just wanted an opportunity to perform with you guys because I think we're the best. And they mm. were like, well, we're going to split up the money five ways because we think you're just as good as any one of us. And so wow. that's when we called ourselves the Furious Five. That's crazy. So you was the fifth member. Yep. That's crazy. Yeah, the, the youngest member. The, yep. Wow. That's crazy. Thanks for that history. You getting it here. You getting it here on Super Longevity Institute. Um, Thanks, bro. Wow, man. Shout outs to Charlie Chase, too, man. I'm trying to get him up here. Oh, that's my legendary brother for life. I'm yep. trying to get him yep. up here, you know. 
Charlie mm-hmm. Chase, yo, dad, this history is crazy. Um, so um, where's um, dang, where do I start? Um, oh, um, Keith Cowboy was around. He he, he created the word um hip hop, right? Right. Was you around when he was doing? What was, what's the story behind uh, that? No, I, I wasn't a member of the group when uh, Cowboy created uh, the word, uh, the term hip hop. Mm-hmm. Um, but as per uh, other members of the group, you know, mm. uh, they told me that um, Cowboy, you know, he was the crowd pleaser, mm. uh, the crowd motivator, and so when he got on the mic. Most of what he did was geared towards inciting the crowd. Mm-hmm. So he got the crowd to respond to him, uh, you know, no matter what it was he said to them. Mm-hmm. And so um, there was one of their homeboys who had just um, enlisted in the military. Mm-hmm. And so uh, Cowboy was giving him a shout out. And so when he gave him a shout out on the mic, <clears throat> he was basically calling cadence like how they do when they're marching in the army. Uh, and so he was saying hip, hop, hip, hop, you know, to my man, so-and-so, you know, on his way to the to the army, hip, hop, hip, hop. And that's how the term hip hop derived, just like that. I mean, I, I mean, this is without a doubt. You know, all the true hip hoppers know that grammar, the Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five is the greatest group in hip hop. Thank you, bro. Period. There's nobody that's contributed to the culture as much as you guys. Period. So it's an honor to have you on. Um, Appreciate my next that. question, I, I have to ask this. You know, I seen an article with Swiss Beats talking about, you know, um, giving the artists, the founders, forget this, the artists, because the founders of the culture, um. A couple of like I don't know it was a million dollars a year something like that it was like a crazy big amount of money that we all put a pot in and that you receive for life for life right. you know what do you feel about that because I feel like you know every time I see cool work I just want to pull out all the money out of my pocket and just give it to him you know what I'm saying right. and that's how I feel about you I just you know I forget just giving your you know tokens of appreciation I want to I want to see y'all get money <laughs> i want to see her get the money because the the, the 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 culture is generating um i think a billion is something more than a billion dollars a year like come on right. come on man right I, you know i'm really serious about this agenda man and um what do you feel about what's your thoughts on that i mean i, I agree i'm i'm, I'm um, saying. you know i think that uh you know in in no um there's no industry in which any of the pioneers of that respective industry uh, reap the monetary rewards. And so because of that, you know, we're no different. Um, But depending on, you know, what industry you're talking about and and who the, uh, the people who, I guess, uh, inherited that industry, mm-hmm. right. Um, right. you know, it's up to them to acknowledge their predecessors. And so, um, you know, it's a great conversation to have, you know, and I, I definitely salute Swiss Beats and anyone else who, uh, you know, engaged in the conversation and who, um, who uh, subscribes to the mindset mm-hmm. that, pioneers should receive some monetary rewards as a result of you know being the pioneers and exactly. how how advanced uh, uh, our culture has uh, come since since its inception mm-hmm. I think that that's a great conversation to have mm-hmm. and it would be uh, an awesome gesture mm-hmm. uh, because you know all of us uh, are getting you know up in age or whatever exactly. and so everybody doesn't you know doesn't necessarily have health care or life insurance or you know what have you so it's a necessary thing and um, hopefully it it happens sooner rather than later 
Yeah, um, I'm gonna keep my, uh, I'm gonna keep speaking that out because, you know, as a hip hopper, I don't even, it's not even, you know, how can we go further in the culture and if, if the pioneers are not right, like, how are we gonna go? Right, gonna yeah, go Swiss Beat said that as well, and you know, if you look at, you know, uh, uh, like sports, you know, um, you know, uh, Bill Russell and you know. Wilt Chamberlain and that whole crew um, that that helped to be the first legendary players in the in the NBA, um, they're acknowledged. Mm. Um, they're acknowledged. They're you know they're they're respected. And I don't know as far as monetary rewards uh, are concerned, but I know that. Uh, None of them are are homeless. None of them are poverty stricken. Right. Um, they all have life insurance and health insurance. Uh, so, you know, just just that example alone, I think, is a model that we could potentially look at to to implement the same for the pioneers of hip hop culture. Yeah, because you shouldn't want for anything. I mean, we're generating over a billion over a billion dollars a year i mean more than that should be given to the founders that started our live we need to have this conversation now all the blogs you know everybody that's listening y'all need to spread this we we can't even move further without compensating the pioneers and i really 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 mean that i know y'all want to go and invite these gentlemen and talk about scandal and all that other stuff so you can get your ratings and views up I'm not doing that here. We're we going to talk about the the things that needs to be discussed over here. Um, that's what right. I'm about over here. And I and I challenge all the bloggers to be talking about this and keep talking about it and keep making and putting into action so we can make this happen. Because I think it's my it's my opinion. The reason why the culture is in the, in the, in the place the this, this place that it is in today is because the pioneers are we didn't we didn't do, we didn't look back and say yo man. We're going to give you like $2 million health insurance a year. I'm not talking about no handouts, man. I'm, I'm dead serious. Right. I ain't talking about no handouts. I'm talking about they need to be, we need to make them wealthy, man. You know what I'm saying? And so, um, yeah. When was your, when did y'all first put, um, do you remember when y'all first performed at a, uh, a large venue? At a large venue. I mean, not a large venue, <laughs> like a, a club, at a club. When you went from the streets, to the jam park to the jams clubs. to a club. Um, I think the the, the largest venue that we went uh, that we performed in, um, or a few of the largest venues that we performed in, coming from doing park jams to clubs, were like um, the Autobahn Ballroom, you mm -hmm. know, uh, where Malcolm X was assassinated. Wow. Um, uh, the Renaissance Ballroom. Uh, in Harlem, um, there's a place uh, in the Bronx called the Savoy Manor. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Damn. Um, there was a, a hotel in Man in Midtown Manhattan called the Hotel Diplomat. Oh so, shit! Um, yeah, yeah, I heard of that. Those, those were like the largest venues that we played at uh, mm. during during our transition from the streets to. Uh, the clubs. Yep. Wow. Um. Yeah. yeah I mean, oh, and Studio Fifty Four. Oh, you performed at Studio Fifty Four. Yeah, yeah, we Get did. The yeah. Hell out of here. yeah. How was that, yo? It was That's um, crazy. It was. It was insane. It was a tremendous, um, tremendous electricity uh, in in the air in Studio Fifty Four that night. I re I remember like it was yesterday. Oh. Listen, yeah. boys and girls, for y'all that don't know about Studio 54 is one of the illest clubs. Rap don't even go. Like, what rappers, yeah. <laughs> what rappers I, can I say they before the Studio 54? I, I can't even think of a club to to uh, give you today to <laughs> parallel yeah. the, uh, the, the prestige and the influence yeah. um, that Studio 54 had on uh, Nightlife. I mean, I can't even I can't even begin to give you the name of a club today that could 
could compare to that. Not at all. Man, um, please build that township. I just want to go to see them before at the studio. Right, right, that right. Township, so I, can I see mean, that I actually went. I actually went to stu. I was actually at Studio Fifty Four with Rick James when oh, he slapped Charlie Murphy <laughs> and said Unity. I was actually there. Oh wow! Was, like on deck, right there, because Rick James, uh, he was like a big brother to me, and he would call me whenever he got in, uh, whenever he came to New York City, because we both the same uh, zodiac sign. We're both Aquarians. So he would, um, mm. he called me his little Aquarian brother, and he called me every time he came to New York City, and wherever I was at in New York City, he paid for a cab, I'd meet him, and we turn up, like, completely. <laughs> priceless. I love Rick James. Dang. Priceless. Yeah. Yep. Priceless, yep. man. Oh, dang, man. I, you know, some questions I had prepared, some questions I just going, I'm freestyling, because I got, it's you know. Good. You know, it's crazy. Um, you know, another thing I wanted to ask you, you know, we seen all these biopics, man. We really need a we need a biopic for the um Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, man. I I I'm yeah, sorry, I man. Uh, you know. <laughs> what, what y'all doing out there? What y'all doing there, out there? There are some um there are some uh writers and, and producers that uh have contacted us over the um over the years and uh just recently um, someone that uh, Flash is working with contacted me to uh, have me give my account of you know of the group's history or whatever, and so I, I did that. And uh, I'm also writing um, my autobiography that mm. I I hope uh, to turn into a biopic. Uh, from you know about my group from my perspective because everybody has their their perspective so mm. um, hopefully we'll get a few biopics out of this yeah y'all can't why y'all can't really yeah. have one yo y'all deserve I mean who don't want I would watch every single one I would watch every Thank single you. one Thank like you. who would like That's what are we up. doing out here and right. make sure and, and your filmmakers I'm telling y'all straight up. They're gonna own their rights. We're not doing that. We, you know, what I'm saying we're not doing that. Right. No I'm, more, I'm a filmmaker as well, so yeah, there's yeah. A, we're not a, doing a that. Very strong possibility that my production company could be uh, the production company doing my biopic as That's well. What I'm so. saying. Yeah, yo, yeah. we we're not doing we we <laughs> we not you know <laughs> we're not doing that no more, yo. We right. we gonna reap all right. the benefits of our of our devils. We're not doing that no more. Wow, I would love to see that because you know, what was Keith Cowboy like? I always, wanna, I always want to ask, what was he like? It's my brother, um, I, I was, I was uh, closer to him than uh, any of the other members of the group, mm. and uh, very saddened by you know his passing. Yeah, and Big um, loss. he was, he was the crowd motivator, and he was also the enforcer. Mm. Whenever you know anything or anybody stepped out of line, he he put him back. Yeah, yeah. He seemed like <laughs> yeah. He seemed like yeah. a from the stories I heard. He seemed like a like that type of a, of a brother. He, he was a no nonsense. dude. Yeah, yeah. You could tell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. did he have children? Yes, he does. Mm -hmm. All his children need to be taken care of. He 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 created the the world hip hop. Go find them. We gotta go find them. All exactly. his children need to be taken care of. He created the world hip hop. What are we doing out here, man? Right. What are we doing exactly. out here? What are exactly. we doing? I agree. Yeah, what are I we agree. doing? Like we we, we 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 messing up, man. We messing up. We're right. gonna clean this up. We're gonna clean this up, trust me. As we should. We're gonna clean this up because a lot of stuff we need to clean up in the culture. And I think we could do it. You know, every culture at lo that's large as uh, as us and have the influence and the prominence as us. But they, we're going to have issues, but I know that we could solve all of our issues. It can be done. Yeah. As it's a family, not, we can do you it. Know, it's not an impossibility to uh, to implement these things at all. Yeah. yeah. And I think that when we when we when we handle these issues, we're going to see some, some some we're going to see so many great things happen after we take care of our own people the right way. We're going to see so right. much more That's come right. out the culture once we see the um everybody you know uh get compensated and get taken care of like they should um yep you know 
Uh, you're a producer too. Yes, I I am a producer. Yep. Yeah, yeah, you a dope producer, man. You um, who would you like Thank to work you. with, man? Cause I know that's another thing I would like to see. I want to see some more work. Um, I don't really, I don't really have a, per se a wish list of mm. people that I'd like to work with. I'm open to work with whoever. No doubt. Um, known or unknown, as long no as they're you know, as long as their artistic prowess is you know. On the level, you know, I, I work with anybody. No doubt. Um, yeah. Let me see. Oh, yeah, I got to ask this. Um, Are you still in touch with Kid Creole? Uh, I am not. Um, okay. <clears throat> you know, I'm, I'm often asked about this. Um, now, I, you know, I don't have any ill will towards Kid Creole and I I absolutely wish him and and his circumstance the best. No doubt. Uh, but we're not actually uh, none of the members of Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five mm. are friends. We're not friends. Yeah, I know this. Um, it was a business uh, endeavor. Mm. And when we got when we when we joined forces when I became a member of the group. Um, they wanted me to be a member of the group to further their endeavors as, you know, rap artists. Mm. Uh, before there was a, a, a rap uh, music, mm. um, you know, to to look forward to, to have, you know, for any of the artists, uh, the practitioners of, of rap music to have anything to look forward to we had aspirations mm. that it would reach the heights where it is. Right. Uh, we didn't know. We didn't know how, mm. and we didn't know if or when. Mm. But we had high aspirations, mm. um, and so as a result of those aspirations, we, you know, mm. yeah, we 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 felt like one day it would get to this magnitude if um, everyone felt about it the way that we did. No doubt. And eventually everyone did feel about it the way that we did. So no doubt. here we are. Um, yeah, so I guess the next question is out of the question. Uh, I guess it's out of the question. Uh, you know I was going to ask you, are you ever going to do another record? I, I, you know, I don't know about everybody else, but this is the only culture where we put an age limit on when we have to stop um MC and it's ridiculous it needs to stop yeah. we need to break the age barrier and the hip hoppers need to um be able to um as long as they they content fit their age why they can't keep going what's I, wrong with I their vocals they're not sports people man right 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 it's not a uh you know you don't need great physical prowess in order to run your mouth all you need to be able to do is run your mouth <laughs> And so, um, you know, I, I agree with that. And and there's definitely an audience. Uh, exactly, for, it is. For, you know, for classic uh, hip yeah. hop. Yes. And so because there is an audience for it, basically all that really needs to happen is, you know, we, uh, we get out of our own heads because, you know, yeah. a lot of us uh, are guilty of, of, I guess, feeling like, there's no lane for us because uh, because of where we are in our in our age, you know, in our maturity. And, um, you know, rap music and hip hop in general, it it began as a youth driven movement. Right. And it, and it still is. Mm -hmm. But because of the fact that the people who helped pioneer it um, have uh, transcended their youth exactly um, and and because of the people who uh, are fans uh, of the culture have you know many of uh, many generations of, of fans have transcended their youth as well we have people who are in their 60s yeah. who appreciate and love hip-hop yeah. so there should definitely be a lane you know, for artists who are uh, of that 
that age uh, bracket to still be able to, you know, release music if that if that's what they want to do, yeah. and then and you know, and there's uh, an audience for them. Sure, I, I, I could. Another thing I was saying to myself, I said, "Yeah, why they not all touring? What, what's the beef? Y'all, why y'all beefing? What, y'all can, if all of y'all got together, you, you think I, if I had the money, if I had a couple of mil, I will, I will be like, yo, I will, I will pay y'all as much as anything y'all needed to see y'all all on the stage, yo. No, right. I know right. that people feel the same way as me. I know for a fact because we yeah. have these, we have these conversations. Like I have these conversations, right. and when I'm not, I, we talk about this. We, you know what I'm saying? So who don't want to hear? New music, and who don't want to see all y'all together on one stage performing? Like, a, y'all could do a whole world tour, man. Like, why? What's what's up with y'all blogs? Yo, yo, talk to them, man. Talk to them, man, because they need to hear this. Right. Like, y'all, y'all, right. this, y'all could do a whole world. Who wouldn't want to see the greatest of Fast and Furious? Well, I mean, it's only right. four of y'all now. But, I mean, well, three. Oh, damn. Kikurio is, going, is, not, is in jail. <laughs> and, but still. You can have right, him record right, from right. jail. You know how many people record from jail to get on a record? When Ma- when Prodigy was in jail, they had him on a record. <laughs> That's <laughs> had him right. On a record. That's right. We could include and, him. And and that wasn't exclusive to rap. There was a um an R and B group in the seventies, uh, late sixties, called mm. the Escorts, and mm. they were all in prison for murder. Get out of here! Uh, I believe I believe it was six or seven of them. And um, they they recorded an album uh, while they were in prison, and um, it was released. And they have a few classic songs off of that album. That's crazy. So, so it's it's possible, you know what I mean? It can be done. Oh come on, man! Yeah, come on! I want to see this, please, please. Right. I want to see this, Melly Bell. Come on, man. Scorpio, come on, man. Come on, man. Right. Come on, man. Stop it. Come on. Your brother Lord right. Betraya loves hip hop. We, we, the people want to see this. Grandmaster Flash, stop it, man! Come on, we gonna come on, please. Come right. on, man. The culture wants to see this because if they see y'all unified, what you think is gonna happen? It's gonna spread out. That energy is gonna spread out right. to the rest of us. Right. If y'all hear that energy, it's gonna spread out. We want to see a worldwide tour. We want to see y'all recording again. We want to see, we want to see y'all filthy, wealthy, filthy rich. We want to see y'all dream country because we can't go further. Without seeing y'all, do we, we want to see y'all continue. This ain't it ain't too late. Y'all ain't y'all, y'all all look good. Y'all all in shape. You know what I'm saying? Melly Mel's always right. showing his muscles. <laughs> right, He's always right, going right. guns. You know what I'm saying? Right. So you see him. Right. So let, I mean, come on, please. And all your blogs, please spread this message, man. Spread this message. Don't don't let it just be with me. Spread this message, man. Cause they need to hear this. And we talking about this behind closed doors but it, we're not saying it's out in the open and i know a right. lot of people trust me i know a yep. lot of people yep. you know what i'm saying so yeah i just had to have my two cents i get excited about that type of thing because uh that's what's up yeah i'm sorry man. yo yo tell tell uh your homie uh mr Kurzweil, I, I i need some oh. gear yo you know what I mean? that's possible he got um instruments Word, um uh, yeah yeah we don't worry it's gonna yo i'm t- hey yo, it's going matter of fact i'm gonna send this to them <laughs> okay yeah I was and, and 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 tell him thank you so much for uh his contribution to uh music culture thank you for saying yeah. that because at yeah. least you know like at least you know you know what i'm saying like oh, man. Well, man yeah look St- stevie wonder could see that <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yo. Word, yep. yo thank you for saying that that really means i'm gonna send this right to them too thank you yeah, I'm gonna send this right to Celia back. I know who I know who everybody is. You know what That's I'm saying? What's up. Um, That's we what's definitely up. sending this to them. Um, right. Uh, oh, you was at Uncle Murder's video show. You know I like Uncle Murder. He's a good guy. Yeah, I, yeah. Um, he's a, I, I like Uncle Murder. Yeah, he's as well. a good guy. Everybody sees the yeah, tough absolutely. persona, but I yep. text. You know, I seen him on. I, he he actually answers back. He be like, "Yo, Happy Father's Day, Matre." He seemed like a real that's cool dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's, yeah, he's, he's just, you can see he's know, down to earth. a hood dude, regular yeah. dude, yo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's real cool. Yeah, yeah, real I see grounded. Him. Yeah, yeah. 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 You, what video shoot was that? What uh, video shoot? Yeah, you did you just say, um, did you? Uh, there's an artist that signed to uh, a label called Sloppy Vinyl, mm. and uh, it was actually his video shoot. He Oh, he did a collab Uncle with uh, Uncle Murder. Oh, I see. I see. And so, um, and and two of my homies, um, 
uh, manage uh, the label and oh, manage okay. the artist. So they asked me to come to the shoot. Yeah, that was dope. I like. I always like to see the um, pioneers of the culture deal with other, you know, some of the younger artists with, with that the they younger feel. generation. Yeah. yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah, yeah. I like, and you always a I, humble I brother. Think, I don't think there's enough of it, but I, I, but whenever I see it, I'm, you know, it always warms my heart. It's like, yeah. you know, it's, it's dope. Like the, it's like the passing of the torch. You know what I mean? No doubt. And, and um, yeah, you know, um, I just feel like, uh we need to break the age barrier so i just feel like you know keeping the brothers the pioneers at the forefront with the i think the the, the coach is big enough now to not just have the youth in the forefront we can have the the pioneers in the forefront as well uh, you don't I mean, have to yeah it's, it's different see, now the coach I is big videos, enough videos i see videos with people's grandparents dancing so yeah. i mean like, if you know you know it's, it, there's no age limit on enjoying oneself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, there's no age limit on uh, uh, how long you should be able to entertain. If, you're, if, if it's in your heart to do that and you have the ability and there's a, a lane, an audience for you, then why not? I mean, I That's don't right. see any reason why there, you know, it should stop because... Uh, of how old you are. Exactly. Unless and you retire. Unless you want to retire. Did you see? Right. I seen Grace Jones, man. Shout right. out to Grace Jones. She hula hooped and sung her whole, all of oh, her songs. That's right. I almost, exactly. I, I couldn't, I said, man, I said, listen, man. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. It was a huge stage. I said, yo, right. first off, she's up there in age. I'm not talking about she still looked great. You couldn't tell. Right. That's she, right. I was like, some we can't there's a, there's youngsters who can't do that. That's the age of one. Like this youngsters. She hula hooped and sung on and sung key. A song. Right. That's right. And hula That's hooped right. the whole song. I said, what the yep. I said, yo, Grace Jones is bad, yo. Grace Jones. Oh, absolutely. I'm saying Been like, bad. <laughs> yo, yeah. yeah. I said, come yeah. on. I said, yo, you know. I said, you know, brothers and sisters, we need to, we need to really. Uh, I, I interviewed two people from Okinawa because, you know, I'm trying to try. I'm going to travel there as soon as we open mm-hmm. up. I'm going to go to Okinawa. That's where nice. the longest living people in the world are, and mm-hmm. and though the elders in that community are people run to touch them, like the centenarians, the old, the elders, they run to touch them because right. they want to live as long as them. They're like, they're like, they want to live longer because the culture is so revering of them. Like they want right. to touch them, they run in the streets when they got they want to touch them, they want to get the same longevity as them. So I, that's when I that's what I see for hip hop culture in the future. That's what we need. That's the type of uh, of things we need to we have to build in within our culture. You know where the elders right. are revered, revered, absolutely revered. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And so, yep. Um, yep. Oh, I gotta ask this. Did you see Melly Mel on Vlad TV? I, I, I no, sent him a message too. I, I, I actually didn't message. see it. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> good. I mean, he dropped a lot of knowledge about the mm-hmm. history and everything. Right. Um, but um, I wanted to ask you: Do you feel that um black people um kind of mess the culture up in some type of way? That black people mess the culture. Yeah. Up? Yeah. Well, I think that, you know, we, you know, that some black people had a hand in it, but I don't think that it was our plight. I, I, mm. I know it wasn't our plight. Exactly. Um, black people didn't, uh, didn't make um, clo- behind closed door deals right. with uh, the prison industrial complex. That Thank wasn't you. our call exactly. because we, we don't control our music culture. Right. Um, we don't control anything. Right. And so as a result of us not being in control, um, we were led to do what happened. I'm not saying that, you know, uh, that that that's the excuse. Right. That's not an excuse. Um, The people who who led us, our people who led us down uh, this route and and ultimately uh, is the reason why we ended up where we are culturally um, 
should be exposed and and dealt with. Um, hmm. But but as long as we're still entrenched in in the circumstance that that you know uh, that we're in, we're you know we're dealing with. We can't fix it while we're in mm. it. it. It has to be. It it has to be finished. It has yeah. to be an end to it. And the only way that there's going to be an end to it is if and when the prison industrial complex is is no longer in business with uh, the entertainment. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. They're they're very much in business. Yeah. Um, and so. You know, if every day of your young, impressionable life, or you hear from your favorite artist who's probably in your ear more hours a day than your parent and your teacher, and they're telling you that the very blueprint to their success is to stand on, you know, the nearest corner or in the lobby of the building or wherever, and, you know, sell mollies, Percocets, Coke, yeah. dope, um, uh, shoot as many niggas as you can and fuck as many hoes as you can. Yeah, yeah. Um, the most influenced uh, demographics of the population become that, yeah. and that's called the power of suggestion. It's it's mm. profoundly powerful, but it's also very subtle. And so, you know, a lot of people aren't even aware when they're being programmed what it's happening. Mm. Um, that that would probably be the reason why I don't own a television. Wow. Um. Yeah, I could dig it, man, because um the stuff that they're programming is def definitely um messed up. And this is why it's important for us to reach back and again do what we need to do for the culture, for the pioneers, because if we did this in the beginning, we had instituted something uh uh that would make the pioneers uh uh set the pioneers up the proper way. I don't think we would see all of this because Melly Mel is right. clear on not not um I always hear Melly Mel and this is one thing I do agree with him on is that um you know hip hop is not about gangsterism you know what I'm saying no no um I I think that you know there's a time and a place for everything and I think that I I don't completely um agree with everything that um you know is indicative of gangster rap. Right. I don't completely shun and and disregard everything that's indicative of gangster rap either, right, because right. it is something. Uh, the the things that they talk about um, are things that are indicative of what happens in our communities. Right. Right. But um, to be you know to to bring it back home to to a real place. Um, that's just not everyone's reality. Right. So for the overwhelming majority of rap artists to talk about, you know, selling mollies or Percocets or dope or crack or whatever and, you know, kill niggas and fuck hoes, that's not the majority of, <laughs> uh, that's not even half mm. of, you know, uh, the, the population the practicing population of hip hop's okay. story. Yeah, yeah. So if that's not your story, why are you, you know, if the, the reason why you're perpetuating this is because you're being told what to do. You're being coerced. You're, you, you know, if you don't, if you don't release this kind of material, they're putting you on the shelf indefinitely. Mm -hmm. And so now, your aspirations, your dreams of being a recording artist have been thwarted because of, you know, mm. um, because you can't follow directions. Right. But that all goes back to, we need to control our culture. We need mm. to stop putting, you know, giving the control to people who aren't us and who don't share our, you know, our goals, who don't share our, you know, our common our commonalities, you know right, what I mean? Right. So, yeah, I feel you on that because, um, you know, um, the glamorization is where I have the problem at. Let me just be specific. Right. Yes. Right. Absolutely. The glamorization. I, like, I don't care. Like, if you coming from a real background, you still in it. Just don't glamorize it and make it a, you know, like it's a, you know, tell right. a, tell the other side of the story. So yeah, I exactly. understand where Raheem is coming from. 
Um, yep. with that, definitely. Um, yep. <coughs> excuse me. Um, yeah. So that, yeah, definitely. Um, what do you think we can do to to try to gain control of our culture? Since you're a pioneer, I think we we need counseling on this from the pioneers themselves on this matter. We can't figure this out on our own. I mean, to me, um, the the way to successfully uh, take back our culture is to, uh, I guess, project uh, the project the the outstanding differences uh, that separate us from them mm. and give people, um, you know, the choice to, mm. you know, give, give them all of the facts mm. of both, you know, both sides and allow them the, you know, the, the opportunity to choose. Um, right. And I think, you know, anyone with half a brain in their head is going to choose, you know, the, the grassroots uh, cultural uh, movement that hip hop began with in the first place. I think that mm. the majority of even young people, um, you know, millennials and, you know, such, I think that they want to see hip hop go back to uh, an organic Place Definitely. And, not, and, and I don't think that they uh, completely are embracing of today's hip hop. Yeah. No, it's true. People are crying. I, I see it all the time. People are crying. They want more. Yeah. They want more authenticity. That you know, they're yeah. just not getting it. They're starving for authenticity. I see that yeah. everywhere. And mm -hmm. and you know, um, if I hadn't, if I had to patent authenticity as a business model, that's the way to go because that's what's going to get you where you need to go. Authenticity. That's the new business Absolutely. model. That's the new right. business model. Yeah, um, yep. If I wasn't um, morally inclined, I definitely would be. <laughs> you know, uh, if, uh, that's I knew that I know that's where the bank is at. Um, right. Speaking of banks, when you get a deal from a label, isn't that just a? It's just like a loan, right? Most of the time. That's correct. It's yeah, like a loan exactly from a bank. It is. They're giving you a loan, uh, and you know, um, and that loan. When you sign that contract, that means that that loan will uh, eventually be recouped, mm -hmm. and you're not really going to see uh, much money, if any, until that loan has been recouped. It's interesting that um, no nobody from the hip hop community has started a bank or even a cryptocurrency where you know we can just hip hop can just go in and be like, look, I need. Um, I want to start something for um the culture. I need to I need to you know actually, take out like a hundred thousand. Uh, actually, I was uh, informed uh, about three days ago that someone reached out to Grandmaster Flash and offered him an opportunity to have his own cryptocurrency. Mm. So it's I guess you know sooner or later it's coming. Yeah, you know um, I don't I don't know if Flash is you know on board with, uh, you know, cryptocurrency and the new, um, you know, the new monetary platforms or whatever, but um, he's a, a technological person. Definitely. You know, he's technically advanced. And so I couldn't see him not mm. you know, getting involved. I'm, I'm definitely um, very well informed and, and you know, invested in uh, cryptocurrency yep. yeah yeah it's a good um i'm definitely gonna have a gentleman an expert on cryptocurrency come on i think it's sunday um so yeah um i'm definitely gonna be talking to him about that i mean i have my own coin out that i, I haven't really you know drew up everything but i have a, i have a coin out i've done a, right. I, I meant a coin so you know, oh, that's that's yeah, 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 yeah. Um, that's, that's coming. Okay. Um, and I. Let's see. Another thing is, without getting too specific, because you know I'm not really about the scandal. Like I like, I don't really like to really deal with that. I try to, you know, what I'm saying I don't want right. to. Even though I know things, I don't want. I don't want to dog anybody in the media. That's not what I do over here. Right. But um, right. with all the scandal, how do you think we can grow with all these scandals that's out without getting too specific on who it is or anything? 
how do you think that we can rise above these little scandals and these little beefs that we that's going on in house? What can we do to? We, I I really honestly feel like we need to we we gotta we have to have a a a, a meeting amongst the minds of all the the um co- the uh, pioneers. We need to sit down secretly. Nobody's gonna say anything about what's been said in that meeting. And right. I don't know, you know what I'm saying? And because I think that, you know, we it's the things that I'm seeing in the media and the things that I'm seeing and, and you know the, the rappers that are that are dying because of the gang culture and the fighting in the streets. Every week you see some somebody getting shot. And it's on camera too. That's the fucked up thing about this. Right. It's it's on camera. Right. They like you've seen it. Like right. it's, it's happening to desensitize people to Yes, definitely to, to murder. To murder. You know, right. If you're seeing it, you know, frequently, you know, on social media because people have camera phones and social media is allowing people to post these kinds of videos, uh, eventually, you know, the public at large will be so desensitized to seeing people murdered that there won't be, there'll be very little to no reaction. And, and no. You know, so, so we, we have to... We have, we're being assaulted on many fronts. We're being attacked on many fronts. This is wartime. Yeah. But people don't yeah. understand that because, you know, they think that war uh, only entails, you know, uh, uh, I guess, uh, you know, it only entails um, an attacker or a foe who presents themselves in an aggressive manner. Right, um, right, and you know, there's a a book that I read over thirty something years ago called "Behold the Pale Horse." Definitely, and um, uh, there's a passage in the book that says, "Silent weapons for quiet wars." For quiet wars. And so you know, um, silent weapons are being used against us on a daily basis. Right. You know, uh, in our food, uh, in 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 our medicine, um, in our water. Um, you know, in our, you know, in our neighborhoods being gentrified and, mm. you know, um, it, just so on every possible front we're being attacked. Yeah. And yeah. if you don't behave during wartime uh, as though you are being attacked, uh, I guess eventually um, you're going to succumb to the attackers. You're going to, you know. If, if you don't even know, if you're not even privy to the fact that you're under attack, you're not even going to behave like you should be behaving during wartime. Mm. This is wartime. Yeah, you ain't lying, man. I, I definitely feel that way. And uh, I just feel, uh, you know, I guess I got, I guess I'm, uh, you know, I'm a little, uh, <coughs> excuse me, idealistic. And, I, and, I, and, you know, the things that I see for the culture I want to see them in my lifetime because I know that we're able to achieve much greater things in the future than we already have. I, I don't think it's done. I don't think we're done. Like you know what I'm saying? I no, just no, we're not done. Yeah, but you know, in order for it to continue, or in order for the for the evolution uh, to continue, we have to first understand, you know, that we're in a dire place Mm -hmm. and in order for us to advance we need to we need to you know come together Mm -hmm. so that we can successfully pull ourselves out of the circumstance that we're currently in definitely definitely i totally agree um when did you all right let me um go back to your past a little bit more when did you do you remember the first rhyme you wrote um, <clears throat> vaguely, I mean, I remember, you know, I remember pieces of it, you know, mm. uh, walking down the street, skipping to the beat when I turned the corner, there was this freak. I stopped for a minute because she looked real on when I turned the ground, the freak was gone, you know, just <laughs> very, very elementary, you know. Um, oh. The, the first rhymes that I wrote um, <clears throat> uh, kind of molded molded me um, in that I, I came up with the slogan Raheem and all the ladies dreams no uh, during the writing of my first rhymes so 
uh, I came up with um, the line that Big Bang Hank from the Sugar Hill Gang uh, used in Rapper's Delight that he stole from me. Whoa, uh, I didn't even know that. That that made me that made me pop in mm. in the Bronx during that time. I'm hemp to dimp, the women's pimp, the women fight for my delight. I got that line from H. Rap Brown, uh, who was incarcerated in Attica yeah. with one of my older brothers, and he gave my older brother a book uh, with his writings, and uh, my older brother gave me the book, and he told me, wow. um, after I told him that I loved the book, he told me, he told H. Rap Brown, and H. Rap Brown said, if I want to use any words in his book that I could use, I could use his words. So that's why I used I'm him to them for women's pimp. Yep. I didn't even know that. That just blew my mind. Yeah. That's crazy. See, that's why y'all got to sit yeah. down with the pioneers and ask them real questions. Ask them, don't, don't waste their time. Ask them some Fact. real questions. Because I didn't even, I, th I thought I knew everything. I, I, you know, I just got school just now. I didn't even know that big Hank from the Sugar Hill Gang took those lyrics from you, and then you got those yeah. from H. H. Rap Brown. Like, <laughs> yep. yep. Yeah. Can you please tell them what who H. H. Rap Brown is? H. Rap Brown was um, uh, political community activist, and um, you know he was uh, very, very instrumental in helping to uh, uh, implement. I the conscious movement during uh, during the 60s. Um, you know, that as, just blew my mind. As it, as it related to the black community and civil rights. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. I didn't even know that. And he was uh, he was also one of the people who led the rebellion in the Attica riots. The Attica, yeah. Uh, uh, Attica prison. Yeah. Damn. Thank you for dropping that. Oh wow! Yep. I know people yep. are gonna have a feel. They're gonna, you know, shout out to my boy on oh, Kareem. He gonna love this. <laughs> He's gonna <laughs> love. Like, oh snap! Shout That's out to my boy Kareem. He gonna love. Oh wow! You got a game show now? You got yeah, a game? I'm, uh, I'm I'm in the midst of uh, producing and hosting a a hip hop trivia game show. Yeah. Yo, that's a great idea. That's yeah. a great idea. Yeah, I want to be. Uh, <clears throat> I want to be the. Um, what's my man's name? The Bob. Uh, From Wheel of Fortune. Ooh, I can't think of his name at the moment. Um, he's he's a a game show host. Wait, what's what's my man's name that hosts uh, Wheel of Fortune? I forgot his name, but you. T I know who you're talking about, though. Right. Um. Or uh, Chuck Eubanks. Uh, any of these, or um, or my man, um, uh, doggone it. Uh, I can't. Who's hosting? Let's make a deal right now. Damn, I don't even know. I don't. Even Wayne know. Brady. Wayne Brady. Yeah, yeah. I'm. I, you know, I I want to be. You know, the new, uh, one of the new black faces of television game shows. If I, you know. Yo, I could see that. Yeah. Yeah, I could see so, you doing that. I really could see you doing that. Absolutely. Definitely too. fit you. Definitely that fits you, yeah. man. That's yeah. a great idea. We need Thank that, you. actually. That would help. Oh, Tag, so you'll be asking questions about hip hop history and stuff like that. Just things that like went on. Right. That. Yo, we need yep. that. We need I, I that. Yep. That's a great yeah. idea. That is a great idea, man. For real, mm -hmm. for real. Wow. Yeah. So, um, Dag, can you tell us a little bit more about it? What, do we, um, what's it, you know, it's it's trivia based, and mm. um, that's a, wow. Uh, without without giving too much of it away, because okay. uh, it's in the, still in the developmental stages. Okay, I got you. Um, there will be consequences for wrong answers. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> I'm scared of going on that one. Okay. Well, you better, y'all y'all better, y'all hip hop stories are those people who think they know a lot about hip hop. Y'all better be studying. Because I know right, some, yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> studying. People prepare for those game shows. 
Absolutely. They've been to these buildings. Like, yeah. they prepare. Like, they go on it. They study and shit. They go on it. That's right. You know right. what I'm saying? That's they don't right. just go on yeah. and just go without studying no. it. Or not. You know, it's like, joint. it's like taking a test in school. Yeah. You know? I, damn, I would love to get on that show. <laughs> I would love to get on that show. Yo, let, keep me in uh, and, uh, keep me in the loop with that. I need to know more we'll about that. Yo. Absolutely. That's a great idea. We, we need we need as many <clears throat> as many contestants as we can get. Um, wow. You know, especially since uh, this is like the the beginning. This is the pilot stages of the production. So we're not wow. sponsored at the moment. So everything is very, um, you know, we're we're still, uh, you know, working on. Uh, the structuring of, of the show and all of that. So yeah, I'm gonna reach out to some people that I need to get sponsored like ASAP. <laughs> that's that needs up. to get like ASAP. Like we need to get on that right away. Like yeah. that's a great idea. Absolutely. A great yeah. idea. When was the last time you performed with all the members of the Furious Five? When was the last time I performed with the group? Mm-hmm. As a member of the Furious Five, you mean? When was yeah, well, not I just performed? as a member. Well, it doesn't have to be as a member. Even before, like after that, did y'all like have a, like a special performance for any event where y'all all had to pull together? Um, I mean, I mean, the last time that um, that the group, well, uh, minus Flash, the last time that the group performed together was like maybe. Uh, three years ago <clears throat> in Philadelphia, mm. and um, it was a um, it was a it was a good it was okay performance. Mm. Okay, um, there was a lot of tension prior to uh, the performance, mm. and so you know, um, basically, uh, I just wanted to you know go on stage and, you know, do the show, no get doubt. paid and go home. You know? No doubt. Uh, and so, uh, but, but I don't get called uh, by the group whenever the group was booked. Mm. So I haven't been performing with the group uh, for, since about two or three years. Um, but it's actually not the group. It's just Mel and Scorpio. That's, yeah. That's not the group. So, um, yeah. for me, uh, if and when the group should ever reassemble, obviously mm. minus Cowboy, uh, and at the moment minus J3O, um, in order for me to agree to be back in that equation, uh, Grandmaster Flash and Kid Creole would have to uh, be a part of the equation. No yeah. doubt. But no doubt. I have no interest in performing with just me, Melly Mel, and Scorpio at all. No doubt. We want to see the people. Melly right. Mel, don't keep it, don't keep coming on. The, you know, I say this respectfully. You know, I love you. I got you on my wall. You know, I love all of y'all. You know, yeah. I ain't gonna do. You know, I sit at the feet of y'all. Yeah, without me, without trust. Without me, I, I respect the partners highly. But let me tell y'all, you, Scorpio, and Melly Mel, please, this is a message from Lil Matreya. I humbly, I know you being, you said a lot on Vlad TV, but I want to say something to you. Please, let's re, let's put all these different, Flash, too, Flash, let's go get Kri Creole. Let's all put a, put away all these um, beasts that we had over the years. Everybody's getting a little older. We're more wiser. You still look great. All y'all still in shape. While you still have your, or I still everything is working. All of, you know, you're still gonna move. You're still looking great. Let's put away all the side beefs. The culture needs to see this. Not just, you know, not, the culture needs to see this unification. We need this now more than ever, more than ever. I, I'm not even a prayer man, but I pray that y'all behind the scenes get it together. I pray that y'all all come as one. And get back and, and start doing some things all together. We don't want to see this. You know, I like to see Melly Mel and Scorpio do your thing. Much respect. But I want to see all the members. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We need to see all the members. Flash, please, man. Please. I got you on my wall, too. Please, man. Please. I need to see all the members. 
all right that's my rant man i'm sorry but i i i we i know i know we need to see this i know we need to see this we need to put all these petty beefs i don't even want to hear about the beast i don't care right i don't even care whatever y'all whatever issues you had in the past most of us don't even care. We just want to see you right. all together. You know how crazy that will be if y'all all got together and did an album and Kikriel came on and said, yo, you know what? We're going to record him from jail. We're going to put him on a record. We're going to do a worldwide tour. We're going to do biopics. we all going to put up all the flash. Say, you know what? Whatever happened in the past, yo, we just let bygones be bygones. We starting fresh, man. We grown men. The culture needs to see this unification. Let's make it happen. I'm pleading. And I'm, and I'm talking to y'all hip-hoppers out there Y'all got to hit them up and be like, yo, I be hitting Melly Mel. He never answers me, though, but he be, he, he be reading the um, comments. <laughs> he reads every comment. I know he reads the comments. Listen, y'all all need to hit everybody up, all the members up. And, you know what I'm saying, if you can find Kikrio's, um information, you need to write them. And you need to hit everybody up and let them know how y'all feel about this. I don't care who y'all are. You know, I see bloggers doing celebrity stuff. You're interviewing celebrities. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. But you know what? The most important thing is to have our pioneers right. Period. Period. And we need to let them know we need to see them together. We need this. Period. Um, Another thing I wanted to ask you. Do you? I know this is going to probably sound like a stupid question. Do you feel like hip-hop is a culture? Because some, you know, I, believe it or not, some people in, that we think is in a culture that we feel, they don't feel like it's a culture. I was shocked to, to hear that. Right. Well, um, culture. I mean, we, we have to uh, we have to look at the definition of that word culture, okay. and um, and see if the things that are indicative of hip hop mm -hmm. uh, fall under the meaning of culture. No doubt. And uh, I heard someone make that statement a while back, mm. and um, it it compelled me to uh, to research the definition of the term mm. culture. And so when I did that, mm. um, I couldn't agree with the person because, mm. in fact, everything about hip hop mm. screams culture. No doubt. Um, you know, every it, when you when you look up the definition of the word culture, everything that is indicative of hip hop screams culture. Right. So it is absolutely a culture, and anyone who says that it isn't a culture, um, apparently doesn't know the meaning of the word culture. Yeah, I mean, it's a simple, right? Right? It's a simple. As, it's as simple as that, yo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I agree, man. Um. Yeah. Wow. Um. You know, they they everybody wants to put their own spin on it, and I I understand that. But at mm. the end of the day, you know, no matter what spin you put on it, it is what it is. No doubt. And that can't be changed because it already happened. You know what I mean? Mm. You don't. You. We don't have a time machine to go back That's and right. change what already. What That's already right. is, so it is, and so people need to just deal with it for what it is. Yeah, I mean, um, I agree, and I'm glad you broke that down. You heard it from the pioneer. I mean, who else better? Than, <laughs> what? I mean, who else are you gonna go to? <laughs> That's that question. Right. I mean, really. I mean, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, but uh, um, yeah. well, I think I think I hit. Oh, what do you think about the hip hop museum in the Bronx? I live not too far from there too. That they build and they're about um, to build. I think that you know, obviously, any institution that heralds, um, you know, the the practitioners or the people who uh, who laid the foundation, That's right. uh, and and the people who you know um, who their successors. Right. Um, I think that it's all necessary to to show our you know our, our acknowledgement, our dedication 
to cultural advancement. Exactly. Cultural advancement is a necessary thing for uh, any society. Um, mm-hmm. You know, societies are judged uh, by their ability to advance culturally. So that's right. Um, the acknowledgement of such cultural advancements is an absolute necess- uh, necessity, and we need, you know, institutions like uh, the Bronx Hip Hop Museum. We need a, a hip hop. Uh, Hall of Fame. Yeah, man. You know, um, we, we need these institutions because otherwise, um, what do we have besides uh, the monetary, you know, gains uh, and That's the right. material gains to substantiate our cultural contribution? Like we don't, you know. Yeah. All, all my academic people. Can, I don't know if Raheem is doing lectures, but he needs to be lecturing, man. He needs to be getting paid in lectures. He needs, he's better. He, he needs to be. I getting. would love to to lecture. Um, people just need to contact me. Um, Where can I, they contact I get, you? I don't get many calls. Um, oh, you gonna get calls to, to be <laughs> on the lecture circuit because uh, a lot of my historical information conflicts with uh, some of my peers information and that's really because many of my peers um even though they are pioneers a lot of them are embellishing their timelines to make it seem as though they started during the beginning uh during the inception of hip-hop when in fact they did not any any mc Mm -hmm. uh who claims that he was emceeing since 1973 um, in hip hop, mm. is a lie. That, that's wow. an outright lie. Um, in disco, you know, there were there were disco uh, MCs, mm-hmm. and not to be confused with hip hop, uh, because they were two separate movements at the right. time. The disco movement were uh, more like our older brothers and sisters, and you know, despite. Uh, you know, uh, two year age difference. Uh, when you when you reach forty something, uh, mm-hmm. it's much more of a disparity. By the time you know when you when you're like you know fourteen, fifteen, and your older sibling is like mm-hmm. seventeen, eighteen, you don't have the same juice card that they got. You can't hang out, um, you know, uh, as late as they can. You right. can't go to the same places that they go to. That's right. And more importantly, they probably don't want you to <laughs> because, wow. you know, you, you kind of going to cramp their style. Mm. So the disparity in age between the practitioners and the, the pioneers of hip hop and the practitioners and, and pioneers of the disco mm. movement, um, although it was a very small disparity, it was disparaging enough mm. to... Uh, to have the the our OGs from the disco movement shun us and look at us condescendingly right, and right. you know refer to b boys as uh, floor sweepers floor moppers uh, wow. because you know we got down on the floor and did these dance moves yeah. and you know they didn't go down on the floor they they did the hustle you yeah, know what I mean? so right. they stayed right. they stayed upright and erect and and they wore you know slacks and and hard bottom mm. shoes and button down shirts and we wore sneakers and jeans and and, yeah. and such so um the clientele that we catered to uh was a different clientele we catered to a younger uh audience and they catered to a more sophisticated older audience and wow so, um yeah. this is another reason why i think that there needs to be a new there needs to be a meeting between all of the pioneers um with just your guys in the room. I don't even need to be there. <laughs> I just want you to see all, all come out right. agreeing and unify. I don't need but Trey doesn't even need to be there with the with the older with the older brothers. I just want to see y'all do it and come together and map out the history, agree upon right. the history, agree right. upon what we're gonna see in the next twenty or thirty years and and 
how y'all gonna how, the compensation for everyone. None, nobody in the hip hop, none of the pioneers need to be thinking about food, shelter, and clothing, ever. Body a lot, ever, right. ever. Right. Yeah. And you know, I see people like Jay Z making deals. Respect to you, Jay Z. I love Jay Z. He's doing incredible things for the culture. He's pushing it. But yo, come on, reach back, bro. Reach back. Right. We need you. We need right. you, bro. And I know you. I know you're capable. You're a good brother. So this ain't no diss to you. You're a good brother. Right. I know you're doing good things. But right. I need. I'm calling him. I'm singling him out. But it's not just him. All no, the wealthiest no. coast it's, people it's, in the culture. You know, it's it's all of the moguls. Um, all of the moguls. Yeah. Yes. That have become wealthy as a result of of hip hop culture. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, we need we need y'all. Please, this is this is a this is a calling. That we, I'm calling y'all out respectfully because I respect y'all too. Um, right. we we need to iron this Absolutely. out before we go further. We need to iron this out. Um, right. yeah, man. Um, thank you, man. I really appreciate this because I knew this. I know how important this is. I want you know. I know how important you guys are to what I do. You know what I'm saying? And so I I really I humbly I, I I you know you made my day by coming on the show. Out of your busy schedule to come on the show, I really appreciate it. I know I Faye Shirky Faye used to talk about you. I used to be like, damn, yeah, Raheem is dope. He used to be like, yo, you need to talk to um um Raheem. He the one that did the walls and everything, man. Shirt King Faye yeah, did yeah, all of this. Yeah. You know that's, what I'm saying? That's my that's that's my Aquarian brother right there. It's another Aquarian. Yep. <laughs> yep. You that's know what I'm saying? So, you know, um, I really appreciate him doing that because I already, I already knew what it was. I was like, you know, I, I, when we spoke, we used to have, when he used to come over here and paint, he always spoke very highly of you. And he's humble mm-hmm. like you. Oh, humble, who, humble who's done yes, a lot. Absolutely. Yep. Who's done a lot, yep. but hu- still humble yeah. and still, you know what I'm saying? And still yep. approachable. So I really appreciate it. And I want to congratulate you, man. And, I, you know, I'm going to keep pushing the envelope and I'm going to keep speaking about this, man. About um, y'all get my, my dream is to see. You. No, I appreciate you, man, for all you done for the culture. And I, and my dream, is not my first dream is I want to see all of y'all get together and be unified on stage and put all the beasts behind. That's what that that's one of my dreams. If they ask me, yo, what do you dream for the culture? I want to see the the remaining members of Furious Five get back together, worldwide tour, biopics, wealthy, healthy, and and doing their thing and getting all of their all of their uh getting the you know, they're flowers while they're still here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, anything you would like to, to say to the um the young hip hoppers that might be listening? Any advice or anything you would like to say to them <clears throat> before we head out? Um, the only thing I, I, I want to leave um, anyone, uh, any aspiring artist, you know, uh, interested in, in, you know, getting into the music industry, um, you know, it's very easy to to follow the crowd. It's very easy to fall in line and do what everyone else is doing. Mm-hmm. But, you know, um, the reality is, is that we were all born unique individuals mm-hmm. and there aren't any two people um, exactly alike. Uh, not even if they're identical twins, there's still some uh, underlying differences between them uh, right. that you know only the most intimately knowledgeable person would know about uh, about these twins, right? Mm-hmm. And so that being the case, you know, as it applies to every individual, you know, don't shortchange yourself by, you know, we're, we're all inspired by each other and it's our duty to inspire each other. No doubt. But we don't have to uh, regurgitate uh, verbatim everything that, you know, our predecessors did. Mm. Learn from what your predecessors did and build on it and be better than we were. No doubt. Um, you know, uh, don't don't be like us. You right. know, take take our strengths and discard our weaknesses, and build mm. on that, and and be the unique individuals that you were born to be. There's no reason why any artist su- should subscribe to the cookie cutter mentality. Yeah. And I listen to twenty artists, and I can't distinguish one from the other. Like mm. something's wrong with that. 
Yeah. That means that people are telling you that uh, you shouldn't be the unique individual that you were born to be. Don't listen to them. Don't believe them. Wow. Perfect yeah. advice. Perfect advice. Any um, where, where can anybody reach you if they want to do a lecture? We want you to do a lecture or anything. Where can they reach you? Because I'm uh, sending this out to all the academics. You can reach me um, by emailing me, Raheem Music at Gmail. That's R A H I E M M U S I C at gmail.com. You can email me there or you can follow me on Instagram, uh, Raheem, R A H I E M underscore Grandmaster underscore Furious underscore five. Wonderful. The number five. All right, I got one more request. Sure. Can you show off your Grammy, man? Oh, sure. Why not? <laughs> show that Grammy off, man. Oh, that Grammy off. I don't, I don't care. You deserve you deserve way more than that. But still, the Grammy, I, I, I want to see it. Lifetime Achievement Award. Wow. So wonderful, man. Well, I, I, I did one better. I got the Grammy and I have the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking yeah. about, bro. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes, yeah. man. Well deserved. Well deserved. And, and this is a reachable achievement for any one of you out there watching this video. I'm Thank not, you, man. I'm not special. I'm okay. only special in that I put the work in along with my contemporaries to to get us this. And you, you're capable of doing the same thing because you have the ability and you have the lane. Okay? So... Put the work in. Don't don't be like everybody else. If you're going to follow somebody, follow the people who set these kinds of examples for you. No words. Yo, and on that note, we out, man. That's Raheem. I'm Lord Matred. This is the Super Longevity Institute. Um, I don't know what else to say, man. I'm just happy we had this interview. We out. All right. One, y'all. Peace and love. Yeah. Peace.